second session of today uh, with Jay Kumar, who's going to talk with us about boosting productivity of your engineering team with developer portals. Uh, just a few reminders on logistics. Uh, any questions you have throughout the day, please feel free to post them into the comments section here of the, of the uh, ch running chat. And all these sessions will be recorded or are being recorded and will be posted up to the Red Hat Developer YouTube channel Probably take a couple weeks to get them up there, but they will be there so that you can go back and watch this one and, and any of the other sessions that you might be interested in. With that, I'll turn it over to Jay, and uh, thanks for joining. Thanks a lot, Mike. So hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Jay Vazen, and I'm really excited to be here today in DevNation uh, Modern App Dev. And uh, I'm working as an associate, in the associate manager in Red Hat Developer Group. So today uh, we'll be talking about uh, how to boost productivity of engineering team with developer portals. So let's get started. So I mean, pretty much most of us would be developer or would have been developer at some point in time in their career, right? So all of us know that how the landscape changed like in the last five years or like 10 years or in a decade, basically. So earlier we were much uh, into our cell where we used to bother about just writing code without having to worry about all the surroundings, the toolings, or the frameworks available, or they were not there. But with cloud native development coming in, and in current era, with abundance of frameworks or tools around us. I mean, as a developer, we are spoiled or pampered. At the same time, we get overwhelmed as well. OK, what is the framework to choose from? Uh, what is the version we need to use? Does it have any compliance issue? Does it have any security vulnerability? What are the toolings I need to use my, for my CI, CD, or monitoring, and things like that. And it number goes on. So for a developer, it adds a lot of stress and thus reduces productivity as well. On top of that, uh, the learning curve doesn't stop, right? I mean, the technology is changing every day, and we have to keep up with that. And we never work in isolation. We always work where uh, work in the kind of product or services where we have a lot of dependencies, be it within our org or outside our org. And it's very difficult to uh, nail down, OK, what all dependencies do we have? Who is the owner for this? Or how to get rectified if some issues happen? And on uh, and to add to that, the documentation. That's another pain. Uh, documentations are either not there or they're scattered all across. right? So that makes it pretty hard. So you are seeing some numbers in my slide. So that is from the productivity survey done, done by Salesforce a uh, year back. So these numbers talks about these pain points. It happens due to increasing workload, demand from other teams, uh, could be due to the pressure of digital transformation, and all learning new skills or adopting ourselves to that. And 76%, the majority, uh, says that cognitive load is so high due to these things that it uh, impacts the productivity. So that was about the problem statement. And now uh, we'll see how developer portals can help us, or like engineers or developers, to overcome these challenges. So in today's agenda, I kept it pretty light. We'll be talking about what developer portals are, uh, like IDP, Internet Developer Portal. And then we'll be talking about Backstage, what it is. And we'll then dive into Red Hat Developer Hub. So without further ado, let's get started with IDPs. So what is Internet Developer Portal? Basically, Internet Developer Portal, as the name says, internal. It's internal to a particular organization or a team. And it is built by a specific platform team. So what platform team does, or who is platform team? To set that boundary, let me try to explain. So basically, I'll be using two personas over here. Uh, platform team is the one who owns or maintains this kind of developer platform or portals, and that's the product for them. So they consistently work on it to evolve this particular portal so that it serves the developers. So it is meant to serve the developer. How it will serve the developer? It will work as a self-service tool where a developer can come in with their request and try to do the things on their own without having to wait or following on a lot of tickets or the processes around it. Uh, it also helps uh, developers with providing the, how to call it, uh, a, a guided uh, or like a guardrails kind of thing, where if they want to set up application or they can quickly get to know what are the toolings my organization supports, which I need to follow on and things like that. So this is how uh, IDP uh, makes life of developers easier, but it's not easy to maintain and build. Uh, that's how it adds burden to platform engineering team as well, who owns this. And over time, the complexity doesn't reduce, it increases. With new tools and text coming in, every time you need to keep on evolving this. 
So it this adds as a neat uh, pain point for both the personas over here. So let's try to see uh, what is the gap in building IDP. So as I said, building IDP is not an easy thing and it requires a lot of effort and upskilling. Uh, and that is what exactly Spotify have realized. So Backspace.io has come from Spotify. They were building this developer portal internally. So many of your organization, wherever you are working on, you would have sensed or have some format of developer portal or might not be. But this is what Spotify felt as they were scaling or growing. OK, there is a need to have a portal, a common portal. And they worked on it and then soon realized it's not easy to keep up with it unless we get the whole community or the ecosystem around it to come and build and uh, scale these particular portals. So that's how Backstage was donated to a Cognitive Computing Foundation, CNCF. And there are different organizations or uh, communities working towards evolving this. So the main goal of Backstage is basically allowing developers to focus on what they want to do, that is coding, rather than navigating through all the tools and technologies, and thus helping to improve the developer productivity. So that was about Backstage. And in the next slide, you can see there are a lot of adopters already for Backstage. I've listed some of these over here on this particular slide. So let's go to the next slide and try to understand what is Red Hat Developer Hub. So Red Hat Developer Hub is an enterprise IDP, and it uh, targets to empower engineering to deliver business value faster. So it helps in four different ways. It provides a single pane of glass to increase the productivity. So what I mean by single pane of glass. So within an organization, no matter what service, toolings, or uh, uh, applications you guys are be working on, everything will be available at a single place where you get to access not just these particular services, you can get access to all the dependencies this particular services has, the documentation. Uh, if you are building uh, APIs, you can see the definition of these things. You can see your workload. You can see their health status, etc. And it also provides self-service guardrails, uh, which uh, we'll be talking in the next slide in, in a bit more detail. So these are basically uh, how to call it. I will call it golden path templates, where you get a predefined curated list of templates by your organization, which will help to scale or deploy application pretty faster. And next thing, best practices with GitOps and automation and real-time viewer application or infrastructure health and security. So this is what it provides. And as you can see in the diagram below, that developer hub primarily has three components. Software catalog is one of these things, uh, which serves as a single pane of class. Then we have software templates, which we spoke about the guardrails, and then we have plugins. So uh, there are plugins is what makes it, uh, how to call it, more flexible, where uh, any organization or any user can add depending on their need. And there's a whole community to support uh, this plugin system. So I'll just, I have listed like six of the plugins over here just to highlight some of these. Like uh, one is like Keyclock, uh, GitOps with Arco CD is the second one, Pipelines with Tekton if you're using Tekton. Uh, it also has application topology for Kubernetes. So if you guys would have used OpenShift, you'd remember topology view. So you can get access to that right in the portal. Uh, we also have OCM, that is multi cluster view. And we also have a container image registry for Quay. So these are some of the examples. And we'll be talking about each of these things in detail in the subsequent slides. And RSTH integrates with industry standards and technologies through broad ecosystem, be it multiple bit providers, Jenkins, and many more. And it is based on Backstage, uh, that's up stream for us. And it works or provides consistent developer experience across different environments, no matter where you deploy it or host it. So let's try to understand each of these in detail now. So what is software catalog? So as I said, software catalog provides a single pane of glass of all the services, APIs, entities right in front of you. And it primarily helps to enable two main use cases. One thing is easier maintainability. Uh, uh, how to uh, easier maintainability? By that I mean any team can get access to all the toolings or the product services they're building right in the place. Thus, it's easier to maintain and get a glance of it uh, in the in the in, in the single portal. And at the same time, it makes things discoverable. So say you're working on a particular product and there could be different teams building something in similar flavors. Many times this gets hidden or gets often or you don't have visibility on those things, right? So this adds discoverability factor to it as well. So this catalog can be built or created through the YAML file stored structure kind of thing. If you guys are into Kubernetes or OpenSoft, you would have remember YAML, I'll be showing it later. 
So it's pretty st standard. You can define the entity. Okay, what is the type? Who is the owner? And things like that. And it will all flow up into the backstage. So that is about software catalog. So next is software template. The software templates are the best practices or the guardrails provided for any developers out there by the platform team. So it helps in creating new resources. So if you want to onboard any application, website, or services, you can use these to create these resources. Uh, it's, it basically has a skeleton which tries to generate those applications for you. It takes you some configurations about your Git provider, be it GitLab, Bitbucket, or whatever it is, and it tries to push this code, uh, scaffold the code into uh, the Git repository with uh, configuration, configuring the CI/CD tools of your choice. But again, it depends on the uh, template which is chosen by the developer. And it's not just that, as in, uh, I mean, how to call it, over the years, the organization worked to automate a lot of things, right? So some of these automations can be leveraged again as part of software templates. So once it is built, it can be uh, harvested on for a long time. So software templates basically, again, enables developers to focus more on creating solutions rather than uh, spending time on following up or filing tickets. So let's see. So in this particular GIF, you can see these are the templates. So I'll be choosing Corpus one. We need to provide some basic information about Corpus, which is already preferred. Provide the registry, say, Quay. And next step, provide the GitLab instance here. You can review it. OK, great. I'll just sit on Create. So it goes through a few steps, like publishing, registering, generating deployment resources, and creating Argo CD instances. As you could see over here, pretty quickly you get to deploy the application and see it in overview. So that is about software template. Next, we'll see plugins. So basically, plugins uh, add uh, a different functionality or different features to the existing backstage instance. And these plugins uh, are not limited. There is a whole community around it trying to build depending on their use cases. And you can leverage or get benefit from all of these plugins out there. To list few over here, there are 150 plugins in different areas like SEM, CI/CD monitoring, issue tracking, code quality, etc. So uh, I'll just click on uh, this particular link where you can see the list of plugins over here. So there are different plugins for three scale, for, for analytics module, uh, for API docs, and the list goes on. So I'll go back to my slide again, and let's try to dig deeper into the plugins. So if you guys have ever used Backstage or explored a bit, uh, you would have noticed that before version 1.18, uh, to add a plugin, we need to follow some steps. That is like installation of plugin, configuration of plugin, and then configure Backstage, then rebuild the whole thing and redeploy for a plugin to be added. And then it's ready to be used by anyone. After v1.18, v1 the process got bit simplified. You have to install the plugin still, and then do a declarative plugin integration. You still need to rebuild and redeploy. With dynamic plugin coming into the play, which is contributed by Red Hat again, uh, it brings in the ability to add the plugin without having to rebuild or redeploy. Basically, you just need to provide some configuration and restart that. And that's all it needs. So that is about the plugins. I'll be moving to the next thing. That is the demo. So let me uh, go to the demo. So this is the instance for uh, Red Hat Developer Hub, which I have over here. And uh, as you can see, this is the landing page. So in the landing page, you get the option to search. So search is basically a search across back to instance, be it a documentation or code or whatever it is. You can also use search from here. You can just search for backstage, and it shows you all the listing over here. So with quick search, you can get to uh, find the information what you're looking for. And it also has some quick access links, depending on the organization, say in the community, it has the website, blog, Slack, YouTube, or whatever. It has developer tooling supported by the organizations. It has CI CD tools, which you can uh, learn more about. It has the clusters, uh, the monitoring tools, and the security tools over here. And then you can also start from the entities. OK, I didn't just talk about entities, so what is that? So let me take you guys to the catalog. So this is the software catalog, what I spoke about earlier, where you can see all the applications right in, in a place. So if you see, there's a different kinds over here, like API, component, group, users, everything. You get to see all the resources at a place, and you can filter it based on, again, different categories, depending on the kind. And you can start it if you are going something very frequently, or if something is owned by you, it will show up in the owned section. And you can also filter by the owner. 
So this adds a lot of benefit when you are searching through something. So let me try to uh, so one other example. So this is the backstage showcase uh, application. I'll try to click on it and let's see what all we have to be over here. So as you can see, backstage showcase. Once I click, it shows me the overview, the overview of the website of my particular application, and the blog or Slack and the GitHub uh, source code repo, along with some information about my Argo CD. I'm, this application uses CD. Uh, I mean Argo CD for deploying uh, for the part of CD for deploying. Uh, the compliance report, uh, the GitHub stats, and many more. And all of these cards, what you are seeing, is not uh, just it. It is extensible. Again with plugins. So uh, let me go to topology view and we'll get to see all the workloads running or powering this particular showcase. So as you can see, it's being listed over here. Uh, you can see the number of pod counts with one click. And if you click on any of these, you get to see the details about the name, the labels. And you can, if you go to resources, you get to see the uh, pod information. It is running the service. If you click on view logs, you get to see the logs. You can download it or so all the information right in the portal without you uh, need to go someplace else. And if you click on the issues, it basically lists all the open issues in this particular repository. So as you get to see, there are like 74 issues over here. Uh, you can read through it, or if you click on the comments, you can directly engage into GitHub. So I'll come back to this. And this is powered by GitHub plugin. And you can also see the pull request or the merge requests. So currently there are like five pull requests open. If you click on any of these things, you get to see the descriptions, what is this doing, and uh, a lot more filtering based on closed or uh, allow or different states. Uh, that is about the GitHub source code control. Now I'll go to the CI tools. So in CI, this is using GitHub actions. So you get to see all the uh, actions being triggered over here, all the workflows. You can rerun the workflow. If you click on any of these, you get to see the branch, the message, the commit ID, and all the jobs which has been run along with the job log. And again, just to repeat, everything what you see, these are powered by plugins. So it's not just GitHub, it could be GitLab or any other provider or anything you choose to add. So in CD section, you get to see the Argo CDs, SD, uh, the author, the message, the revisions, etc. And if you want to dig deeper and look at the YAMLs and things like that, you can always use Kubernetes plugin, which has a lot of information shown over here. Which you can click on, take a look at the YAML view. So that is about uh, workloads again and image registry. So in this case, I was pushing the image to Quay. So you can see uh, the vulnerabilities associated or the all the image tags over here. So for example, uh, for this particular tag, there is a security scan, it says hi. If I click on this, it shows me uh, the advisory with the severity. And with click, you can get to know more about the particular CV. You can read about it. So that's great. I get to see a uh, lot of information right in the portal. And if you click on dependencies, as talking about in real-world scenario where your application is not dependent on just your thing, but many other things. So this particular uh, section shows you all the dependencies the particular application has. If you click on the graph view, it shows you the graphical representation. Okay, who is the owner, whom to contact to, and which system it is part of, and what all it depends on. It depends on KeyClock, GitHub Surface Repository, Argo CD, etc. And you can filter it, and all those things you can perform uh, in this particular view. So that was about. Uh, on the catalog and what all information you can see into the catalog. So just to show you that, if you want interested in, so okay, I spoke about a YAML file. So if you click on the view, you get to see uh, something similar. I mean, how it looks like. So you have to define the API version, the kind, the name, the component, and these annotations which power different plugins, along with uh, the spec, which says, okay, what is this type? What is the lifecycle system owner, etc. So that was about the catalog. And uh, if you're working on API, how does it look like? Let me just open one. You can see pet store over here. So when you're working on API, this uh, view is pretty similar to what we discussed in the last time. In definition, you can see the swagger right into the portal where you can perform get, post, etc. You can test your things and you're good to go. So that is about the APIs. 
I'll go back to the learning path. So learning path is one of the important thing which we highlighted, right? There's one of the gap where there are different toolings or different tech stacks growing and depending on the all also it varies what they want to use. So this learning path is like curated set of tutorials kind of thing or the LMS kind of integration where you get to see all the things uh, which you need to learn or you can equip with pretty quickly. So for example, if you're looking for deploying with Quarkus, you can click on this and it takes you to respective location and uh, you can go through the courses and try to uh, learn more or improve, increase your knowledge. So that is about the learning path. Uh, next, let me try to talk about software templates. So this is what I spoke about the software templates. So there is a uh, different kind of templates and these all will be curated based on the organization again. You can see as we have some Ansible chart, we have Argo CD, uh, which you can add to the existing project or you can create a brand new project. So whatever you choose to, you can perform over here. So just to give you an example again, so if I click on this, I can it just provide my GitHub org and I'll say test console, my test my node app, uh, it lists all the users. So my user ID is in multiple J over here. The system, if you click on next step, it asks you what is the CI tool you'd like to use, GitHub Action or Tecton. And depending on this, the option changes. Say so GitHub Action, if you click on next step, it gives you the summary. You can go back, modify it, or you can hit create. So once you create it, it will be listed in the catalog view again. So these are the uh, different options with which you can try out these things, uh, software templates. And uh, next, I would like to show you the clusters tab, which is powered by OCM plugin. So if you click on the clusters, uh, you get to see all the clusters uh, which have been configured through this. Uh, like with it, one is Genus, which is in ready state, and one is in not ready state. Both are in AWS, and one has the upgrade available, number of nodes. So if you click on this, you can further drill down, and you get to see all the useful links uh, of basically whatever you need to get access to it. You can go to the console, you can go to the customer manager, you get to see uh, the availability, the CPU cores, the memory size, number of parts, and cluster information also over here. So as I said, this is not just it. All these capabilities can be further enhanced depending on the need with the power of plugins. So uh, there's something called settings where it shows the user who is logged in. You, if you like, like light theme or dark theme, you can change the theme accordingly. And uh, there are different authentication provider. Currently, I have configured GitHub. So you are seeing uh, GitHub configuration being done over here. But it could be anything. So that is all I think pretty much which I wanted to show you guys uh, right into the uh, developer portal and how it makes your life easier. So just to summarize, uh, we spoke about three things. One thing is catalog, where you get to see all the information, all the applications at a glance. Then we spoke about different plugins, which is basically enabling the developers to get all the information or see everything right there without having to worry about the nitpicks. They just need to have a working knowledge if they uh, interested on it or else uh, it, everything can be configured with help of software templates which are available and all this list can be increased and then we have a learning path and the information in the clusters and what mentioning i mean the plugins which i spoke about so all of these plugins can be added uh, depending on the need or use cases the organization has and the whole uh, developer community or engineering team can benefit from it so I'll go back to my cluster. I think that's all I wanted to showcase. And I'll go back to my slides. Uh, so I think that's all I had from my side to say. Now I'll be happy to take any questions if there are any. Yeah, th thanks, Jay, for, for a great presentation. Um, there is one question in the chat here. Uh, can it run in a Docker container? And what are the resource requirements to deploy? So yes, so basically uh, to run the whole backstage instance, right? You can run it in any way. So uh, there is already a repo. I mean, for the basically backstage upstream, you can use that, or you can use the JNS showcase, which are midstream, and deploy it. For this deployment, what we are using is basically Helm chart. Helm chart is also possible, where you can just add the Helm repository and follow some steps, provide some configurations, and it's up and running. Does that answer your question? I'm not sure the question in the in the it was from uh, 
him and Shu Gupta in the in the chat there. So if that uh, if that didn't answer the question, feel free to follow up and then we can uh, connect uh, connect you with Jay to for to clarify. Likewise, I know you had a question here regarding the cost of that. That's something that I'm probably not really for this team to, to address, but uh, for the the Red Hat sales team to to handle, so we can yeah. be feel certainly happy to connect that there. So. Great. Well, with that, uh, we certainly, Jay, appreciate your your time and presentation today. Everyone joining, we're going to uh, I'll stop the stream here momentarily as we queue up for our next session. Uh, the next session coming up at the the bottom of the hour here is uh, is our next one is hunting down the monsters hidden in your software supply chain uh, by Hugo Guerrero. So I look forward to hearing that. Uh, and and again, as a reminder, these will be these. All these sessions will be uploaded to the Red Hat Developer YouTube channel. Probably be a couple of weeks, um, and with the holiday pending, it might be into January before they're posted. I'm not 100% sure, but uh, feel free to certainly have opportunity to go back and, and watch this and any of the other sessions you may have missed. So, look forward to seeing you hang around here or pop over to one of the other stages for some of the other tracks, and we'll be back shortly. Thanks, Jay. Thank you.